Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Now I know that this one has a controversial title but in my opinion people spend far too much time and effort working on their technique when there are a few things that can actually give them more benefit on the tennis court. Now don't get me wrong, technique is massively important when it comes to injury prevention and improving the efficiency of your strokes. However, there are three areas that you need to master before you look at your technique. So in this video I'm going to take you through those three things and how you can practice them to get more out of your tennis. Let's go. Welcome back. So before we get into the three areas that you need to work on before you start thinking about technique, let's talk about why. And one of the first points that I'd like to make is if technique was so important, then there would be a perfect technique. And if there were a perfect technique, all of the pros would play in a very similar way. And if you take a look at all the pros on the tour now and in the past, everybody plays with such different styles. But outside of their styles, there are a few things that all players have in common and it's their ability to get themselves into the right place at the right time. I know lots of players that look the part on the tennis court with fantastic shapes on their forehands, backhands and volleys, but they really struggle to win matches. There's no point in having amazing technique if you can't get yourself into the right place at the right time. Your forehand may look like this when you get the perfect positioning, but as soon as the ball gets too close to you, you have to change that technique anyway. So the three areas that I'm gonna talk through are the three R's, ready, read, react. And if you can do all three of these things fantastically, that's when you can start looking at your technique. So the first one, it sounds super obvious, but being ready is vital for any shot. And I can guarantee you that you and I are less ready than the pros are. What we need to be thinking about when getting ready is making sure that we have a really athletic ready position. We need to make sure that we've got a really wide base and we're staying low. This is gonna allow us to change direction really quickly and be ready to pounce on the oncoming ball. As well as getting yourself into an athletic position, you need to have your eyes on the ball. Now, yes, you might be looking at the ball, but are you really hunting for it? When you see the top players on the tour, you can see that their eyes are piercing the ball, meaning that they're really ready to pounce. Expect every single shot to come back. That way you're gonna be more alert and ready to go. As well as being athletic and watching the ball, another thing you need to do is make sure that you split step at the right time. Now, every single time your opponent makes contact with the ball, you should be in midair. What this means is that as soon as you land you're ready to push off into the direction in which you need to travel to get to the ball. So the next time you're training or playing in a match really focus on being more ready. Be athletic, watch the ball and try to time your split step so that you're mid-air as your opponent makes contact with the ball. Now that you're ready, we can look at the next R, which is reading the ball. And this area is where most people struggle. Now, when it comes to reading the ball, we have to read five different ball characteristics in the space of half a second. We need to know what height the ball is coming in, what direction, depth, speed, and spin. The best way to improve your reading skills is by simply spending more hours on the tennis court and playing in more matches. This experience is going to allow you to see what's happening at the other end and to predict what type of ball is coming in towards you. We're lucky enough to have an ITF seniors tournament here every year at the Avenue. And I see players competing in the over 80s and over 85s categories, and they get to every single ball without running. The reason they can do this is they know exactly what type of ball is coming back. Now I see loads of people that are physically fit and super fast around the court, but because their reading skills are poor, they tend to start their movement too late. What this results in is them having to sprint to the ball and when they get there, they get themselves jammed up or off balance. Whereas if you can read the ball super well and you can start your movement early, you don't have to move so quickly. And that way you can be far more balanced when you get to the ball. Now for you to be able to move left and right or forwards and backwards, you need to know where that ball's going to land. It's much easier for your eyes to see the direction direction of the oncoming ball, whether it's coming to your forehand side or your backhand side, before reading its depth. So if you can prioritize taking your racket back straight away, you can then start to move your feet after that. This is a really good shortcut to preparing much earlier. So as soon as you land your split step, you should look to make a unit turn to the side of your body where the ball's going to. Once you've made that unit turn, that's when you can make your move forwards if the ball's coming in short, 
backwards if it's coming in deep or either side. Once you've improved the speed of your reading skills width ways and taking that racket back early, the next step is being able to read the depth of the oncoming ball. A little exercise that you could do in your next practice session is by trying to say in your head whether your opponent's shot is going to land deep or short. Use the service line as a marker, and as they hit the ball, say to yourself, deep if you feel like the ball's going to land behind the service line, or short if you feel like their shot's landing short. Obviously, the earlier you can say this to yourself, the better and more efficient your reading skills are. Now, this type of reading is purely reactive. You're looking at the oncoming ball. If you want to take it a step further, you really want to start moving before your opponent makes contact with the ball. And there are a few things that can help you with this. Number one is your opponent's court position. If your opponent is pushed backwards, the chances are they're going to give you a short ball so you can take a step forwards. If, however, you give your opponent an easier mid-court ball, they're coming in, you should think about stepping backwards because they're going to hit a more aggressive shot. The same goes for if your opponent's on the run and they're really stretching for a ball, the chances are they're gonna give you a short ball so you can step in. But if they're looking comfortable, take a step back. As well as looking at their court position, you can also take a look at the way that they're preparing their racket. The size of their backswing makes it very obvious. If they've got a really big backswing, you can tell that they're gonna hit the ball a bit faster. If they have a much more compact or short swing, they're probably gonna hit a shorter ball. The same goes for if they're preparing with an open racket face, they're probably going to slice their shot. Or if they're preparing with a more closed face, they're probably going to drive or hit that ball with more topspin. Now, it's gonna be impossible for you to think of all of these things at once. That's why I say the best way to develop these skills is to spend more time on the court. But having the knowledge of what you need to look out for can definitely help. Now that you're ready and you know where the ball's going to go, the next part is how you react to that. And it's all about your speed moving to the oncoming ball. Now, the quicker you get into position, the more time you're going to have to execute the shot. And in turn, that's gonna give you more options. Training your agility, your speed, and footwear patterns is going to be massively important when it comes to reacting quickly. But like I said before, if you can read the ball much better, you won't have to just rely on pure speed. A phrase that I like to use with my players is beat the bounce. And what I mean by this is they should aim to try to get everything prepared from their racket and their position before the ball lands on their side of the court. If you can aim to do this in your next practice, again, it's gonna give you a lot more time to execute your shot. As well as this, beating the bounce is going to allow you to be far more balanced and stable when you hit your shot, as opposed to running through the ball. This is gonna take some time for you to master, practicing your ready position, making sure that you're working on your reading skills and being more efficient, but also making sure that you react quickly once you know where the ball's going. Once you're comfortable with all of these things, if you're still making mistakes or you're not hitting the ball as big or accurately as you'd like, that's when you can start to look at technique. But up until then, I would seriously consider really trying to develop your ball tracking skills and the way that you move to the oncoming ball. So they were some of the reasons why I feel you should spend less time working on your technique. Try thinking more about ready, read, react, and it will pay dividends in your tennis. I honestly believe that this is gonna help you whatever your level, whether you're a beginner or a professional tennis player. In fact, when you see the pros training on the practice courts, these are some of the things that they're trying to develop. What they do is they do the basics extremely well. And that's why everybody has a different technique, but they're so effective. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so yet. As always, I'm in the process of planning my next video. So if you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. And I'll look forward to seeing you in next week's video. Take care.